Hi, my name is Bashir and I'm a network and machine learning engineer with about 10 years of experience that cut across network operations research, cloud computing, financial services, and academia. And I'm a postdoctoral research scientist at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab in Berkeley, California, where I'm working on a US Department of Energy funded project called the Deep Learning and AI High Performance Networks Project. My current research focuses on developing AI and machine learning algorithms to control high-speed networks and to optimize how existing U.S. Department of Energy network infrastructures are utilized. <clears throat> now, there's a lot of talk about AI, right? And lots of people will agree with me that AI has a lot to offer. But what's quite surprising is that people don't agree what AI actually is. To help us in our learning journey, to help us understand this concept of AI, data science, and machine learning, I have adopted a framework from the University of Oxford. And in this framework, I will introduce the main concept of AI and how it's actually done. And that, of course, relates to machine learning, right? So what you will see at the center here of our framework is machine learning and the three ways in which machines can actually learn, which are supervised learning, unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. You will see that the cycle says deep learning. Now that's of course where a lot of excitement, you know, has been recently, particularly with regards to image, natural language processing, and also speech recognition. Deep learning can be combined with both, you know, supervised, unsupervised and reinforcement learning. So what exactly is AI? In simple terms, it's the ability for machines to interpret and learn from data to make predictions, and they do so without being explicitly programmed for that. Now, in the traditional computer programming, like the coding you guys are already doing in, in Code Academy, the programmer defines the steps, right? But in machine learning, it's the machine that learns from the data to arrive at a prediction that, that they weren't explicitly programmed to do. And it's that bit that really distinguishes machine learning from a traditional uh, programming. Now let's take a look at this framework in a bit more detail. So artificial intelligence is what we seek to achieve and we now have you know, machine learning at the center. So to many of us in the field, you know, these two terms are used interchangeably sometimes. And it's for that reason that I have placed machine learning you know, at the very much at the center of our framework. Now, what you will see here is that there are three essential ways in which um, machine learning can be implemented, or three ways in which machines can actually learn from data. And what you will see here is basically the supervised learning, which is essentially the traditional way. Or let's say how, for example, a child will learn maths. You sit down with a computer, you provide the rules, right? And you do the exercises and you correct the computer whenever it makes a mistake, right? Just like how a child learns. So the computer and supervised learning learns to become better. So and traditional tools here can be things from regression, you know, classification, right? And in regression, what we're seeking is we're seeking to predict a parameter. Think about, for example, maybe when um, a supermarket orders drink, or maybe when a restaurant um, orders meal, right? How much drink is needed is a how much drink how much uh, drink is needed is a function of many factors, like maybe what what the weather is like. Is it summer? Is it winter? Is it a weekend or is it a weekday or is it a large? Is there a large sporting event and all that? You can use machine learning to predict the demand of a particular drink, basically the demand of a particular consumption of drink or even a meal, right? So in classification, we talk about, you know, typical problems like loans, like mortgages, like credit rating, for example. When you apply for a loan or a mortgage, right? Machine learning can be used to predict whether or not you can receive you know, a given loan or a given mortgage, or whether or not there is certain risk associated with that. You know, this is a typical classification problem. And that again, you know, 
we use supervised learning for. So on the right hand side of the framework, you will see unsupervised learning, right? And a typical question here we are asking is how this relates to clustering. Now in unsupervised learning, we do not need to provide any information to the machine at all. You know, but we let the machine discover patterns in the data on its own. A typical question here will be, for example, associations between products, right? And we all use this all the time. For example, maybe Netflix recommends the next movie for you to watch, right? Or maybe when Amazon says customers who bought this also bought the following, you know, this is a typical recommendation engines. And uh, this is a typical recommend. These are typical recommendation engines that are based on supervised learning and clustering algorithms. At the bottom of the framework, you know, you will see reinforcement learning, which is a bit of hybrid between, you know, supervised learning. But we provide a lot of information about context and unsupervised and in unsupervised learning where maybe we pro unlike in unsupervised learning where we provide the machine with essentially you know no information about the context at all that's i mean that's what we do in unsupervised learning right in reinforcement learning is a bit different we provide the machine you know only with a reward signal so we tell you whether you know it's going to succeed or fail that's actually determined by the reward signal and we provide it with you know series of action as to what action it can it can actually take to achieve a certain outcome for example so let's say is it taking the right step in the right direction it gets a good reward signal but if it's taking the wrong step in the wrong direction it takes a you know it gets a bad um, reward and then the machine basically learns on its own strategy on how to succeed let's say for example in the game so again reinforcement learning has a wide range of applications and i can tell you it's certainly one of the most exciting areas of developing ai agents because that's actually the area i'm actually um I'm currently working on one of the most interesting recent advances in deep learning one of the most recent advances is actually the deep learning so and the deep learning is a new approach that takes you know the old concept the concept of neural network and they adds this idea of back propagation to create deep learning networks. I'm gonna be covering this in my subsequent videos, but when you hear a deep network, it simply means it has like, you know, hidden layers, right? Hidden layers within the network. Um, so, but it's very important because it touches both supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. And when it's combined with any of these approaches, it can show a great impact, basically, right? It can show a great impact in terms of image or in terms of speech recognition in particular or even in terms of you know natural language processing and whenever you pick up your smartphone these days i can guarantee you you know you'll be using some form of deep learning network for example image you know speech recognition or nlp thank you very much for watching